Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here, and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Today, we're gonna to take a look at creating a meteor touching down and uh, crashing into the street. So here's sort of the basic idea of what we're gonna be creating. Uh, it hits the ground. We're gonna create this debris and the ground cracking, and uh, should be a lot of fun. Um, it's pretty tricky. There's a lot of stuff here, but um, hopefully I'm gonna show you everything you need to know to. Uh, get it going. Now we will be using Trap Code Particular, which is a plugin for After Effects. It costs a couple of bucks, but it's a great tool and it'll definitely help you out. Now we're going to be using it to create some of the atmosphere, some of the dust in the shot. Um, now if you don't have Particular, what you can do is go in your backyard and get a pile of dirt together, put it in your hand along with a grenade, no, along with like a small firecracker, and then light it and then when your hand blows off what you can do is sue the company that makes the fireworks take the money from the settlement and then buy particular and then we can we can do this tutorial together so of course um, you're gonna be doing it left-handed um, which may or may not be a problem either way um, let's go and get started now if there's time we'll try to get into some more atmospheric effects when the meteor crashes down to have a little bit more smoke and other kind of elements happening during the explosion. Of course, that gets a little tricky and uh, hopefully I can just push you in the right direction. You guys can tackle that one on your own. In the meantime, here we have our shot. What we need to do is take a still frame of the end. And so we'll take this shot, save frame as, and uh, we'll go set this to best and uh, save the Photoshop file, or we can change it to a JPEG. Let's see here, JPEG, and maybe set that to 10 for the quality, okay, okay. And then just go ahead and set the path and render that out. Okay, so here we are in 3D Max, so we're gonna create some road destruction. Now, even if you're not a 3D animator, um, this will give you a good idea on what you would expect with working with a 3D animator and what kind of files that you would need in order to composite in After Effects. So even if you're only an After Effects compositor, this should give you a good idea on uh, what to expect. Let's go and jump into it right now. What we have is our image that we exported from After Effects. So we'll drag that into the background, set as these two, choose OK. And then we're gonna go ahead and create a floor plane. So we'll take a plane in the Create Palette and we'll just draw it here. Also hold down Alt and Middle Drag so that you can sort of match the angle of view of our camera in our live action scene. Also, I'm gonna right click Show Grid Off and we'll take our plane, go into the Modify and just make it a little bit larger. And we'll just move it over. Okay, so that's gonna be our floor. Now, the other thing we wanna set up is the lighting. So I'm just gonna make a box and maybe a sphere and uh, I'm gonna hit M, and that's gonna bring up our materials. You can also go Rendering Material Editor. And we're gonna make a special kind of material that is transparent except for the shadows. And that way, if we add lights in our scene, the shadows will cast onto this material and look like they're actually on the surface of our street. So we'll go over here, click on Standard, change it to Matte Shadow, and there should be an equivalent type of material in pretty much all 3D programs. Choose OK. We'll drag that onto this material. We'll also right click on that object, go to the properties, and set it to see through. If only making things in the real world see through were that easy. I mean, can you imagine the possibilities? I'd probably go to the casino and go to a blackjack table. And then when the dealer's dealing the cards, I would punch him in the face. Um, OK, let's go ahead and just move on. Um, we're gonna create a new light. We're gonna create a skylight. And we're gonna go and put it down right here. Go to the Modify panel. Turn on Cast Shadows. And we'll set this down really low because it does take a long time to render to like four. And then we'll go into the Render Settings. And we'll set this to HDTV 1280 by 720. And actually we'll go 864, 486. And then I'll right click on Perspective, choose Show safe frame. And that looks good. And then uh, we'll go ahead and render this. So we'll drag that over, click on render. Okay, so that's a basic way to set up some nice uh, shadows 
and of course you can increase the samples um, a little bit later. Now I'm going to go ahead and select our light and shut cast shadows off and just so that things will render a little bit quicker and uh, we can get through this. Speaking of which, let's uh, move on. Um, we're going to go ahead and create a particle system. So I'll delete these two objects and we have our floor plane. I'm going to go into the create palette for particle systems. Click on PF source. Drag it out here. Right click. Make sure it's set to move and we're going to move it up. Now the particles are sort of being born, you can see, as we scrub through the timeline. Now I'm going to hit the letter 6, brings up our particle flow. Now you can also go in here and click on particle view and it'll bring it up here. Now this will be a bit tricky because we don't have a lot of space to work with, but uh, we'll do our best. So what you have is nodes that represent different events and things that are going to be happening to the particles over time or based on specific scenarios. Um, in this case, we're going to set it up. We're going to delete the rotation and the shape. And we'll go into the birth. And we want it to stop emitting at frame 0. And we want to emit one particle. So if we scrub through, you can see our one particle is being born and it's flying down. So with that set up, we're going to go and create some more objects. So we'll go to the space warps. And we want to add a deflector. And we'll click on the deflector here. And we want to draw it so that it looks like it's in the same spot as our floor plane. And we just move it around. And also we'll go ahead and add some forces. And we're going to add a wind. And make sure the wind is uh, lateral, um, horizontal. And also some gravity. Make sure the gravity is pointing down. And a drag. And a drag is, is actually exactly what you would think it is. You know, like you have that friend who you go out with and you think to yourself, man, this guy's a drag. And that's what it is. This guy sort of slows you down, you know, annoys you, um, you know, just ruins your whole day. Hopefully Sam's not watching this. All right, let's go ahead and move on. What we'll do is go back, hit six. Okay, now we want to set it up so that our particle hits the floor. Now it's kind of hard to see here. So we'll go into the display and we'll set this to a brighter color. And so there's our particle. We can even set it to a circle and it comes down. Now we want it to collide with our deflector. So down here there's a collision event. We'll drag that right above the display and click on it and we can choose by list and we want to select that deflector. So now when the particle hits that floor it's going to bounce. Now we want it to do more than just bounce but that shows you exactly what's happening at that point in time. Now the other thing we want to do is spawn more particles. So We'll go over here, we'll drag a spawn event out, and after they collide, then they come into the spawn event. So you can see they, um, they give birth, they have a speed, they collide, and then they spawn. Now in the spawn event, you can see now they turn back to green ticks, but we can change that to say red circles. And so now the first particle hits and then turns into two red circles. Now we can go into the spawn event, increase the offspring to say 200 and now we have 200 particles being born from the one particle and this is going to represent our street debris and rocks also we'll come down here to the speed and we want to set the speed up pretty high and the variation up and the divergence and so now it's just kind of this crazy looking explosion of particles and we want to go ahead and add our forces in but we want to add them into a new event so We'll go ahead, bring the forces out, and we'll drag our spawn particles into it. And that way the spawn particles move on to the next event, and we can also add another set of spawn particles, which we'll get into in a moment. Okay, so what we're going to do is click on the force, and we're going to add our forces. Click by list, and we want to add our drag, gravity, and wind. Select. Okay, so now you can see we have gravity and drag, but the particles are falling through the floor. So we want to add another collision event. So we'll come back here. So we're going to add a collision below the force. Click on it. Add the deflector. And so now the particles are going to bounce. Now we want to set it up so it looks um, a little bit more realistic. So we'll just go in here and uh, we'll click on the deflector. And we're going to set the bounce to about 0.65. Turn up the friction. Now the friction is uh, you know how, it, how much it sticks to the surface. So like carpet there's a lot of friction and you know something like a slip and slide has very little and the reason why 
is because you spray it down with water and then you run as fast as you can and you jump on it and you go slide down. It's the funnest thing. You should try it. And if you don't have a slip and slide, you can get some trash bags, tape them together. Anyway, we'll save that for another day. Okay, back to the particles. So we have our particles. They're blowing up. They're bouncing and they're acting crazy. Okay, now we want to go ahead and create our street pieces. So come over here to the line tool and we'll zoom in here and we want to create some some random chunks and uh, you know you just want to kind of draw some pieces, close the spline um, so you can make as many pieces as you want um, this will be good for now and so we have the three pieces I'm gonna go and click on one go to the modify, add a bevel modifier and we'll zoom in here and what we're gonna do set it to start negative one and negative 0.5 actually and the height to be 0.5 and the outline to be 0.5 so you can see it sort of comes out turn on level two make that like two and turn on level three and we'll make that 0.5 and the outline negative 0.5 so that looks uh, pretty good. Now we can also add some noise to make it a little bit more sporadic and less perfect. So first thing, go add a subdivide modifier. It's at the bottom. And then we can go and add a noise modifier. So uh, it may not be on the screen, but just uh, scroll down until you see it. And the subdivide, that looks good. And for the noise, set the scale to like 10 and turn it on to fractal. And for the X and Y, you can turn that up and then you kind of create a wild looking piece. And then we can copy all of that, hold down shift, copy, select these other pieces and paste and this other piece and paste. Now this piece kind of looks like a dove that's flying down. Um, so we can probably change it around. Um, so it's not so distinct. That looks like a Playboy bunny. Ugh, not that I know what that is, because I don't. Um, OK, back to the noise. All right, so great looking pieces. Hit M, bring up our materials. Now we have some images, we have some asphalt, and we're going to drop that right onto a blank material. Now you can probably uh, you know, take this to the next level, do a search for some texturing tutorials. Um, we're just going to do it kind of basic here um, and just color the whole material. And uh, so I'll give you a little idea on how this works. Is These are all the channels for the different properties of the material. So we have like specularity and you know things like that. Well, instead of using the color here, we're going to use a picture, which is this asphalt, and it's going to not use the color at all. But what we can do is pick kind of a greenish blue color, similar to what we see on the street here, and then come down to the maps channels and turn the diffuse blend to about 80%. And so it's blending between the picture and that color, and now we're sort of matching that a little bit better. Ideally, you want to add some dark edges and maybe some cracks, all that good stuff, but you know, for now, this should get the job done. Now, we go into the map, we can view the image, and we can see it's just a piece of asphalt, and we can also click here, and then it will allow us to see what the picture looks like in the viewport. Now, we need to add a UVW map, so we'll go down to UVW map, and it's at the bottom there, and that basically makes it so you can see it. Turn on box, and set the length, we'll do like 25, 25, 25, and that looks good. We can also copy that and paste to our other pieces. And we'll hit M and we'll drop that material onto those pieces as well. So that looks pretty good. We also can make uh, you know a couple of other chunks for our dirt. So we'll go just create a quick sphere. So we'll just uh, create a sphere. Bring the segments down to like 10, uh, maybe like 12, and we'll add a noise modifier. Um, it's down there, just uh, look for it. 
and we'll turn the scale to 25 and we'll turn it to fractal and just turn up the XYZ amount and maybe lower the scale just so it looks like a crazy piece of dirt and uh, we can make a couple of these and maybe you know we could just sort of like do that um, you know the more random the better um, you know we'll probably even change the noise on that piece so it looks uh, more different and then M and we're gonna create another material and we just have this dirt texture and we'll drop that into a new slot and this is very basic texturing I'm just trying to get this out there and so now we have little dirt pieces so back to our particles we'll hit six and I want to group our big pieces together so we'll choose group and we'll call this street and these pieces and we'll group them and we'll call it dirt and uh, then come down here now these particles that spawn here we want to add a shape instance so shape facing shape instance drop that right in there and we want to use our street pieces so what's going to happen is every one of these particles is now going to be represented by one of these pieces make sure it's set to group members and it'll randomly choose between those three now we can't see it it's because our display is set to ticks we'll set it to geometry and now we have a stack of pieces and that looks awesome um, not really um, go ahead hit six we'll go ahead to the spawn we'll lower the amount to maybe 50 and the shape instance will bring the scale down and the variation up so we have kind of some random pieces now they're all flat we're going to add some randomness to the rotation so we'll come in here we'll add a spin and we'll also add a rotation and we'll set the spin to maybe 500 and you know we can change it to uh, speed follow um, and it'll kind of spin in the direction that it's going um, a bit so you want to play with those numbers until you uh, get something nice um, shape instance will lower the size down even more and uh, that looks uh, that looks okay now the other thing we may want to do is take our particle uh, source and move it back and then rotate it so that it kind of goes forward in the direction where this explosion is going to be taking place now not too much but basically just to kind of give it a little bit of a, a feel that it's flying forward now the other thing we may want to do is in the perspective we can do view create camera from view and then in this view we can uh, move the camera forward but then take this tool and zoom it out so that you know the pieces just go flying um, we can go and play with the drag amount and turn it up maybe five by five by five and that'll give it a good effect gravity maybe point eight and our wind we could turn our wind down actually <laughs> probably should have done that first but we don't want the wind to be doing anything other than giving it a little bit of atmosphere as far as turbulence and that way it just kind of is a little bit more random um, that's pretty good we'll probably back this up and rotate it forward a little bit more okay make a little bit more room there so that should work pretty good for now and uh, you can always increase the collision or excuse me the spawn speed and just turn it up and that way the initial blast is fast and then we have drag that's gonna slow it down a bit so we may even back the camera up and you know that way the pieces don't come flying at the camera so fast so this is just something you're gonna want to play around with until you get the speed that you want but ultimately that is the idea and you know sort of what we're after go back into the spawn and we'll also turn the divergence up so the particles go everywhere okay now we're gonna create dirt pieces so we'll take our spawn event copy it select this event and paste it now what it's gonna do is just make a whole bunch of more particles but shut it off for a moment and take this event and hold down shift and drag it over 
and we're gonna make a copy. Open this up a bit. And then we'll drag this over here. We'll zoom into our dirt pieces. And so now we have a copy of the exact same event. And we can maybe move this around and organize it a bit better. This one is gonna be, uh, we could right click rename, is gonna be for our dirt. And this is gonna be for our chunks and these events uh, respectively. So our dirt, which comes down here, we wanna go ahead to the shape instance and change it from street to these little pieces of dirt. And now they're gonna be exactly in the same space as the other particles because it's a copy of the event. And so we'll go into uh, the spawn event and click on a new seed. And so now the particles are in different places and you can see that here. Um, let's go and add some more pieces. So I'll hit six, we'll go into the dirt and we'll turn up the offspring to say 500 and maybe turn the variation up. So the particles are going everywhere and the divergence up. So just some wild party. Um, close that down. And also I'll hit six and we'll turn down, say on the chunks, we'll turn down the speed inherited. And that way the dirt pieces will go flying faster, maybe because they're smaller um, and you know, that'll you know, work better. Okay, now solving a couple of technical problems, uh, the particles are gonna hit the floor and they're gonna continue to spin and bounce. So we'll hit six, we'll go in here and what we're gonna do is shut off uh, the collision and collide after four times and stop. And so the pieces are just gonna bounce, 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 and then basically stop. And you know, after four bounces, it should be pretty close to you know being uh, slow enough to stop. Um, I don't want to get too far into this, but there's actually some other solutions. Um, you know, one solution is to set up a speed test and say, okay. If the particles are going slower than a specific velocity, then move on to another event and stop. Um, or there's another kind of quick solution. It's called go to rotation. And uh, let's see, we go to rotation, add a rotation operator. And then when they collide after four times, they move on to the next event. And the go to rotation is going to sort of snap them into this rotation value. And you set this to random horizontal. And also I'll set our display to geometry. And you can see they're orange and we can kind of figure out what's happening. So after they bounce four times, they turn orange and then they sort of rotate to a stopped position um, like you see there. Now it's a little bit slow, so we'll probably turn that to maybe five or so. And you know, bring the rotation randomness uh, you, know, you can add the divergence, so it's just a little bit random. And you can also do that to this collision event, just bring it right into that same event. So you can have one event doing everything for you know a whole system of, of particles. Now we're actually um, gonna split it up, so I'll select the wire there and delete it. Hold down Shift, make a copy, and then drag this into it. And that way we can have a specific uh, material for it once it gets to that event. And we can do, uh, let's see, material static, drop that in here, and also add a material static here. Hit M, bring that up, and this is the dirt, so take this one, add the dirt instance, we'll take this one, we'll add the road instance, and close that. Okay, pieces hit, they go flying. now. There's other ways that you can do parts of this simulation, like using Reactor and all this other stuff, but ultimately this is a really easy way to create a lot of wild destruction uh, relatively quickly. And for our chunks, we may go into the instance and turn up the scale um, so it looks you know, really wild. And you can just hit play and, and kind of see how this looks and you know, do the pieces look too heavy? Is the animation too fast? You, know, you can turn down uh, the gravity um, you know, turn the drag down eight by eight by eight. Um, even turn the friction down on the floor so it looks a little better. And also go into these different events and turning up the inherited speed so they, uh, you know, look like they go flying a lot more and maybe the bounce. 
So it looks, you know, really wild. But that's up to you. I just, you know, want to show you uh, the tools and hopefully you guys can use them uh, to create some very cool stuff. We may also want to go back into these chunks and go and link that up to the new event. Collide after, say, three times and they'll stop. So hopefully everything kind of comes to a stop, even though we're going to be cutting um, to another shot. The idea is to sort of have a piece come flying at the camera and then, you know, use that as sort of a cut point. But, uh, you know, that's up to you guys. Um, so that's the basic idea, and next we're going to render it out. So how we're going to render it is we'll hit 6, and we want to add some motion blur. So how we do that is per event. So we can right-click on this event, and this is the dirt pieces, and turn on image motion blur. Right-click here, properties, turn on image motion blur. Turn that on, and we'll close that. And there's our pieces. We, uh, you know, dare turn on our light um, shadows because it's going to take forever to render. But hopefully you can see uh, what we're creating here. Okay, so you can see all of the pieces and the shadows and, and how that's all coming together. Now, it looks like our matte shadow material is a little short. So we'll move it forward so that it covers the whole frame. And we'll probably even scale it up. Now, in order to render it out so that we have the transparency that we need, we're going to go into the environment, shut off use map, and we'll set this to like an ambient grayish green color. So something similar to the background. You can also just set it to black or, you know, like a very neutral gray. And then we'll go into the render settings. We're going to set the range 0 to you know, 31 or so, or actually, we might even set it from 7 to 35, and that way uh, we don't have to render out anything extra. So we'll go 0 to 35. Um, one other cool trick is say you want to make this slow motion, is you can come down here to the time, and we probably should have done this in the beginning. Um, set it to the frame rate that you're using. In this case, we're actually using 24 frames per second. But also, what you can do is increase this number to like, uh, you know, 100. And then when you render it out, you're going to have basically the slow motion animation. And, you know, it might be kind of a cool way to show how intense uh, the scene is uh, by just doing it in slow motion. Although sometimes you have to adjust, uh, you know, some of the animation once you do that. But, you know, kind of a cool way. We may even do it. Let's do, uh, let's set it to 60. So back in here, now that we've slowed it down, let's turn it up to 70, which it already is. Very cool. And we'll set the low number to 15. Now, for saving the file, click on Files here. And here I have a Renders folder. I'm going to create a new folder. And I'll call this Road Explosion. And we'll open it up. And we'll call this Road underscore Explosion. And we'll change the format to PNG. Save. And RGB 48 bits. OK. So now that's going to export the transparency that we need in order to make this shot work. Now you might want to go into the light and turn the samples up to 10. And also, if we go to the very beginning, we want to grab our chunks and, and just hide them. So right click, hide selection. And that way they won't render in our scene. Very cool. You can also just keep them on. Right click and choose object properties and turn off renderable. And that way they will be there, but they won't render. Also, be sure to go into your render settings and set it to full quality. You may even set it to a little bit higher, like 1600 um, for this shot. And that way you have some room to move the shot around in compositing. So that's what you need to do. Close that, click render, and uh, we'll see you in a bit.